Good morning Celtic fans, where are all the zombies that comment? And as Chris Boyd certainly never saw it coming. Shea Given wins up Chris, after Celtic thrashing. Celtic captain Callum McGregor, opens up on being in a bad place following the horror collision. And Rangers pettiness led to hostile Celtic Park, and their players absolutely crumbled in it. The Sky Sports pundit had little doubt about the income of Wednesday's derby clash as he polished his smile ahead of a trip to the east end of the city. On Monday night his confidence had been reinforced by the lone signing of Aaron Ramsey apparently the biggest signing to arrive in Scottish football since Paul Gascoigne in 1995. Celtic's problems were obvious. Without Kyogo Furuhashi and Tom Rogic, they had lost two match winners. Leo Hattait, Matt O'Reilly and Giorgio Stracoumakis had started less than 10 matches between themselves and were up against a well-drilled Ibrox side packed with winners. Behind the goal in the Lisbon Lions Boyd was shocked by what he witnessed, telling readers of the paper he writes for. Celtic were tremendous, let me say that here and now. Everyone knows where my allegiance lies so that's not an easy thing for me to admit, but it's true. Up for it, determined, focused, united as a team, they were everything the Rangers weren't. They grabbed the game by the throat and didn't let go until they'd throttled the life out of my team. Sure, the Rangers were better in the second half when Van Bronckhorst took off his worst offenders, but it was way too late. Celtic had the game won by then and they knew it. The title race now moves on to a doubleheader on Sunday with Sky screening the action from Fir Park and Ibrox. With Celtic kicking off first, the pressure could be cranked up on Giovanni van Bronckhorst with Boyd and others alarmed by the performance, tactics and post-match comments from the Ibrox boss to Wednesday's first defeat as boss. He knows Celtic are the better football team and squad. Shea Given was in full wind-up mode on social media on Thursday night. The Irishman was at Celtic Park taking in the Glasgow derby midweek when the Hoops smashed their Glasgow rivals 3-0 in a comprehensive victory. The Celtic support are rightfully jubilant about the game and Shea is no different. Expressing his delight at being back at Celtic Park, Shea has also had a cheeky dig at Chris Boyd who wasn't looking very clever at the end of the game. The Sky Sports pundit who is paid to be an Ibrox cheerleader obviously didn't enjoy Celtic dominating the game. Shea piled on tonight, telling the former footballer to keep his chins up. See my thumbnail from yesterday and you get it now. His tweet went on to say. At no one Shea given. Great to be back in paradise last night. The boys at Celtic f did not disappoint clapping hands sign clapping hands sign clapping hands sign shamrock hash keep your chins up at Chris Boyd.9 rolling on the floor laughing at Celtic Park. Boo moaned. It looks like he's doing it in good jest, but the Celtic support won't mind Shea winding up Chris. Talking about them, there were so many things about Celtic that blew the Rangers the other night, but perhaps the most important aspect of them all was the hostile Celtic Park environment. Every single one of the 60 plus sang, chanted, and roared their hearts out to create a boisterous chasm of noise that had Rangers beat before they even stepped out of the tunnel. It was etched on the vast majority of the Rangers players' faces. James Taverney looked as though he was close to tears, whilst the likes of Joe Aribo, Ahmad Diallo, and Glenn Kamara all shrunk into their shells. We won't even go into their back line, they'll never want to experience an atmosphere like that ever again. The Rangers' last result at Parkhead actually came when they had some away supporters in the ground. But up against an army of green and white hordes, it was all too much for this mentally fragile Ibrox team to deal with. And yet, as the full-time whistle went and Rangers went up the tunnel as soon as they could, it's worth remembering that what they experienced last night was a direct result of their own sheer pettiness earlier this season. The true reason Rangers had no fans in Wednesday. Because they had to play a game of one-upmanship earlier this term. Celtic couldn't guarantee them tickets for this fixture to the uncertainty over Covid so Rangers flat out refused us any for Ibrox. In turn, this was the result. Celtic refused Rangers tickets and it led to the environment that their players were so terrified of last night. 
The whole ticket war of course started back in 2018 and was initiated by Rangers. It was them that slashed Celtic's Ibrox allocation to just over 700. They didn't like us winning and singing in the crumbling park that is Ibrox. Now suck it up, Celtic are back top, and all we have to do is take one game at a time and keep winning. It's not over until Fat Sally and a few chins Boyd are crying at Celtic being crowned champions again ole ole. And on that note have a great day Celtic fans. Thank <laughs> you.